noticed that over the past year or so, Tesla stock has the tendency to rally earlier in the week that the earnings release takes place, probably due to rumors about the earnings report itself. So let's take a look at the weeks leading up to Tesla's first quarter earnings release, which was scheduled for after the market closed on April 29th. And as you can see, Tesla was trading up around 7.10 on April 15th, which was two weeks before the earnings were scheduled to be released. Now, before we get into the option strategy that could have been implemented to take advantage of this trader's observations about Tesla's price behavior the week of earnings, we need to make sure that everyone watching the video understands how call options work. If you understand call options, don't worry about this. It's going to be quick, and we're going to jump right back into the lesson. So it's known as a call option when a stock entitles the buyer of that option to purchase 100 shares of that stock at a certain price called the strike price of that option, regardless of what price the stock is trading at before that option expires. The buyer of a call option pays what's called a premium to the seller of the option because the seller of the option is taking the risk that the stock will go past the strike price of the option, in which case the buyer can exercise his option. But if the stock on the expiration of the option, of the option is not beyond the strike price of the option, then the seller just pockets the premium that he was given by the buyer. He walks away completely free of any obligations. The option, in other words, expires worthless because it was never triggered. So let's say hypothetically that XYZ stock is trading at 100. So let's say that there's an option chain 30 days out from today for XYZ, and we find that the option to buy XYZ for $105 in 30 days costs 80 cents. Then that option would cost the buyer $80 because it represents the right to buy 100 shares of XYZ. And so you need to pay 100 times 80 cents to buy the option, which is $80. Now, moving out 30 days, if XYZ stock closes on the day the option expires at 105 or less, the options expires worthless and the seller of the option just pockets the $80 and the buyer of that option just loses $80 on the transaction. However, if the stock trades up to say 107, then the seller is required to the, to the buyer to sell his shares of XYZ company for $105, even though they're trading at 107. So in that case, the buyer would make a profit from having bought the call because he paid $2 less per share for a stock than it's actually worth. And he paid 80 cents for that option. So he made money on that one. So those are the basic workings of a call option. So let's take a look at a possible options trade on Tesla that I think you're going to find interesting. So let's say on that day, you looked up the options chain that expires on April 24th, the week before earnings. And at the same time, you looked at the option chain for May 1, which is the option chain that expires right after earnings. So options on April 24th on that chain will expire before earnings. And the May 1, 1 chain, that will be alive and exposed to the price movement of the earnings release on April 29th when Tesla re reports its earnings. So if on that day we went ahead and sold two of the April 29th 730 calls and bought two of those 800 May 1st calls, then what that trader has entered into is known as a diagonal call spread to options income traders. Now, in a minute, we're going to teach you how this trade works and why we structured it this way. I wanted to let you know that sign up now and don't miss it. Let's now break down what's happened here from a cash flow standpoint. So we'll see how this trade starts out and why the cash flow is so important in this case. So as you can see, we sold the 730 April calls for $40.62. And remember, each option represents 100 shares of stock. So we multiply that by 100 and we sold two of those. So when you do the math, you see that we received $8,124 for selling those two calls. And as for the two long calls up on May 1, well, those have a cost of $39.24 apiece, which again, if you do the math, comes out to a cost of $78.48. So as you can see, this transaction creates positive cash flow for your account. Now, keep in mind that your broker will require you to have a balance of at least $13,724 for this trade because of the risks involved. Keep this capital requirement in mind because we'll be coming back to that a little bit later. Now, this positive cash flow will become important, as you will see in a minute, because now we're going to move forward to the day that those April 24th Tesla 730 call options expire. And you can see that Tesla rallied slightly from the day we put them on, but we gave some room for that. So as we sold those calls at 730, while Tesla was trading at 710 on the day we opened this trade. And so with Tesla, as you can see, closing at 725 on April 24th, those call options are worthless and expire with zero value, as we talked about. After all, who would exercise an option to buy 100 shares at 730 when you could go out into the open market and buy them for 725, five points lower. And so those options obviously expire worthless. And that original cash that you received, you just pocket that. So let's think about the enviable situation that we're in now on this trade. So let's say that Tesla doesn't rally before earnings. And in fact, the market rumors are the earnings report is going to be lousy and the shares will go down. Well, in that case, the 800 calls are obviously going to have no value if the shares close below 800 on May 1st. And therefore, the original cash flow becomes your profit on the trade. In other words, once that 730 call expires worthless, the trade is now a guaranteed winner. Of course, you'd like your prediction to come true, but it's nice to know that you're now in a risk-free trade and only have upside should the 800 calls indeed increase in value. In fact, so options income traders depict their trades in risk graphs, just like this one. And as you can see, the cash flow we received on the trade creates a floor of $276 on the trade and the surviving 800 call, which is still alive until May 1st, that provides upside potential to the trade in the event that Tesla rallies up to or after earnings. Okay, now let's move forward to April 27th, two days before expiration. And you can see that Tesla has indeed experienced a huge rally. And as a result, the 800 call has now pushed up in value to $50.35 from the original 39.24 that we paid for it. So now let's analyze where we are from a profit and cash flow perspective on this trade if we chose to close it at this point, which we most likely would have. And as you can see, we get to pocket that original 8,124 from the two 710 calls we sold. And, you know, because those expired worthless. And we also cashed in the 800 calls that are still alive just, just now. We cashed them in for over $10,000. Then we subtract the original cost of those 200, 800 calls to net out to a profit of $10,346 on the trade. Now, 
One more point I'd like to make before we wrap up. I'd like you to consider how much more efficient options are than shares of stock. When this diagonal trade first be began, Tesla was trading at 710. When we closed the trade, it had to rally to set it had rallied to 798, which is a gain of $98 per share. It would have taken more than 105 Tesla shares to ride a $98 gain up to a profit of $10,346, which would have and it would have originally inquire, required an investment of over $74,000. Yet the options trade only cost us a little less than $14,000. And so there's that much less risk in the options trade, as well as that much less capital required, making it an easy choice as to which direction to go in many cases. So the key takeaway from today's video is that options allow you to get into. In we are thinking about trading setups. We are thinking about trading setups that we place in our playbook, our playbook is our trading business. So we're not sitting around thinking about whether or not General Motors should be higher or lower. We're not sitting around thinking about whether Apple shouldn't have sold off as much as it has recently or should be higher. We're not thinking around sitting around thinking about whether or not Facebook uh, has more downside risk because of government regulation from its present point. We're not sitting around predicting whether or not the market's gonna go up or down, whether Spies, Qs, IWM, Google, Amazon, Netflix are gonna go up or down. That's not what we're doing. We're sitting around looking for real good risk reward plays and trading setups setups in our playbook these setups have a title there's a strategy for how you trade them there are variables that go into developing that strategy there are variables necessary for a trade you're archiving these setups for your playbook so you get better at them you're measuring them you're keeping really good trading stats of each of these very specific types of trades you're placing your best trades into your playbook you're building from measured success for you you're building from measured success for you. Take a pen out and write that down. That's your business. Your business is what you've measured that you have traded successfully and you're gonna do it more often and bigger. So here's an example of a trade strategy for a type of breaking news play. This is not every breaking news play. This is not me telling you this is the very way that you should trade a breaking news play. This is one subset of a breaking news play. This is one type of trade that can work in the marketplace, that does work for traders in the marketplace that we're exposing you to. The variables of this particular trade, the variables that I'm looking for to make this particular trade are substantial news. Substantial news that's unexpected and not baked into the price. I wanna be reacting quickly to the substantial and unexpected news. I wanna fight for price. That means I wanna get the stock at a really good price. To get this breaking news, you need to be connected to all the important news feeds. Trade the news, briefing.com, Reuters are some. There are others. Bloomberg is the gold standard for large players for the specific trade of a breaking news play. Good to know how stocks are connected for sympathy plays. So if you get a breaking news play in one stock, there may be three or four others that are also going to move based on the news on this one stock. What news will drive a stock? You need to know. You need to be studying. I'm going to exit this particular trade when momentum slows. And to give you most interested, <clears throat> this is a trade mastered by the top return on investment active traders on the street. I like to get a big picture view of the setups that I'm attacking. In this case, we're going to take a look at General Motors, a breaking news set in General Motors, which is not a particularly very active high ATR stock, ATR meaning average to range. It doesn't move as much as lots of other stocks in the marketplace. So the fact that we have this as an example is... Uh, means the news was more significant. But we're taking a look, and we want to know what our yearly uh, chart looks like of, of General Motors, and we get that picture. We want to take a look at our 30-day and our 30-minute and get a picture of, hey, where we're at in General Motors overall. You can see we're trading very nicely over the last 30 days and breaking above prior resistance. I'm getting this picture in my mind of where we're at. Five-day, five-minute. We're seeing a, a breakout, a large breakout to the upside, which is what we're going to talk about here today. It's a lot of fun to talk about. This is actually a really interesting trade. I want to know, before I trade a stock, certain facts about the company. For example, I want to know the volume. I want to know the relative volume in the stock. Relative volume is how it's trading in relation to how it trades on other days. So in this case, our vol is almost two. So we're getting twice the amount of volume in this, on this particular day we're going to talk about than normal. And by the way, in a time period where volume is what? Compressed. So that high R vol tells us the stock's in play. ATR in the stock's kind of low, 1.18. I like to trade stocks that have an R vol of over 0.8. If a stock has an ATR of less than 0.8, I'm probably not going to trade it. Short interest is very low. We like to know what the short interest is because if the short interest is really high, the stock can move explosively to the upside more than other stocks. There are more natural buyers. The more people short a particular name, the more natural buyers there can be in a particular name. When you're just starting, if the short interest is above 20, be careful. It's above 30. Probably not a good idea to trade it. The institutional ownership is a key 
fact to know before trading a stock, it tells us how likely the people who own it are to get rid of it. The float is 1.2 billion, huge, large cap stock. These set the context for how volatile I expect the stock to be, helps me to determine how much the stock can move during the day that I'm trading it or during the days if I'm making a swing trade that I'm trading it. And I wanna be consistent about knowing this information because then I'm building my feel for the marketplace. But if you're not consistently looking at very specific facts, every time you make a trade, that feel you have for when to exit and when to enter can't be as strong. The news in this particular stock on day one, shares surged after being temporarily halted. GM announces a restructuring program which includes shutting down assembly plants and cutting jobs. So they're shutting down plants and they're cutting jobs. GM said no further products would be allocated to the Detroit assembly, the assembly in Warren, Ohio, and the assembly in Ontario, Canada. GM would also cut jobs at the Baltimore Operations Facility in Maryland and at the Warren Transmission op Operations Facility in Michigan. Following the announcement, the stock soared as these actions would increase long-term profit and cash generation potentially. You might say, oh my God, they're cutting, they're cutting plants. Well, how could the stock go up? Shouldn't the stock go down? Aren't they signaling that their business practice, their, 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 their business prospects going forward are lessened? Well, the, the street actually will view this temporarily at the beginning as them able to run their business more efficiently, them able to potentially cut some, some fat, them able to be able to perhaps earn a larger margin on their business. And so it's a little counterintuitive for those of you who are students of economics and so they're saying, how could this not go up? I, I understand your trepidation. We're students of what stocks do after news comes out, not how the market should judge the news. It's the patterns that follow after. So that day, uh, President Trump told the White House, told White House reporters, they spoke with GM's chief, saying that he was unhappy with the company's restructuring and expects GM to put something else in Ohio. Timestamp, 2.46 p.m., day one, we get that factoid. We take a look at GM, GM on day one, surges. Halted at 10.19 to 10.40 for pending news. The restructuring news is released, and GM has a 5.5% move to the upside. Big move in this large cap stock. And then the Trump comment that we hear at 246, get that 246, uh, came out, but on this day one, the market didn't react to that. We move into day two. How is GM going to trade? So one of the challenges presently for active traders has been uh, the market creating a direction and then the market failing to follow through in that direction uh, based upon information that's coming out from the White House. So uh, most, most, in most particular, the trade war between the U.S. and China has been causing the market to go up or down based on the news flow that's coming out of the White House. So the White House will say, yeah, it's really not that likely that we're going to cut a deal with China on trade. We're more likely to slap these tariffs, move forward in that vein, and the market generally has reacted negatively. And then you know, the market will start to, you think, trend to the outside. And then all of a sudden, from the White House will come news that we're making progress with China. We've got talks lined up. Maybe Larry Kudlow will come out and do an interview and say, I like the progress we're making. We're making significant progress in our talks with China and the market will rebound. And so you've had to stay real close to your news feeds. You've had to stay glued to the news that's coming out of the White House, which if you're not a nimble trader can, can be a little bit uh, frustrating, particularly when you're in the money in a position and, and then new news comes out and, and it gets disrupted. So on this particular day, on this day two, the Trump comes out and says, very disappointed with General Motors and their CEO for closing plants in Ohio, Michigan, Maryland. Nothing being closed in Mexico and China. The USA General Motors, and this is the thanks that we get. We're now looking at cutting all GM subsidies, including for electric cars. General Motors made a big China bet years ago when they built plants there and in Mexico. Don't think that bet is going to pay off. I'm here to protect American workers. The key comment there is we're now looking at cutting all GM subsidies. So GM now is in jeopardy of seeing less money coming to them from the government that had been anticipated. So this news was not baked into the price of GM yet. Uh, this news is significant. Remember, I want to think about trades as variab with, with variables in them. So I want substantial news. I want it to be unexpected. I don't want it to be baked into the price. And you know, this is an example of a breaking news tweet that fits that variable, which I'm looking for to make a breaking news trade. I'm not sitting there saying, I predict that Trump is going to come out and speak negatively about GM for doing this. I'm not sitting there predicting that, oh, you know, GM uh, is, your, is your bet for uh, driverless cars. I want to be exposed to that. The market is going to use the sell-off as an opportunity to buy more. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I am reacting 
to setups that have variables that I trade well. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're talking about this and later in the day after Trump tweets and GM tweets. Again, this can be, you got to be close to the news feeds and it can be a little bit frustrating if when Trump tweets that they're thinking of cutting GM subsidies, you get short and you're looking to sort of hold that for a swing trade and you're in the money, you're in the money, you're in the money. And then GM comes out and tweets, we're committed to maintaining a strong manufacturing presence in the U.S. Many of the U.S. workers impacted by our actions will have the opportunity to support new growing areas. So GM's saying, hey, uh, Mr. Trump, we're committed to the U.S. And it can be frustrating because well, that's, that's a counter tweet and meant to uh, appease uh, the president and any sort of backlash that, that he may ask uh, his players to uh, furnish on, on GM. So how does that work in terms of trading? Good question. So at 206, Trump tweets his, his, his disappointment in GM on Twitter. That's a breaking news trade opportunity. And again, there's, there, there's different trades here. So I'm going to talk about a fast trade. There are swing trades you can make with this. Perhaps we'll save that for another episode. And, and it's important that you're a swing trader not talking about a swing trade because really the, the big takeaway from this is how to think through trades like a professional trader and how to set up your trades with variables, specific variables to make quality trades so that you can do that for yourself. That, that's the most important thing. So I'm talking about this one particular fast trade. And you know, so for this trade, you know, I'm gonna wanna react quickly. I'm gonna wanna fight for price. And I'm going to wanna be taking this off when the momentum is slowing. You know, so I'm going to be reacting. You can see the arrow right here. I'm gonna be setting my stop above here or maybe above BWAP. All right, so I'm gonna react because there's breaking news. This is negative news that is significant and unexpected to GM. It's not baked into the price. I've got a good risk reward to hit it here. Set my stop above the last consolidation area or above VWAP, depending on the type of trade you're making and the type of trader you are. And then I want to I want to take it off when it starts to slow. So this is trade decision one. Or certainly here, it's slowing down. For it's more time, it's, it's really not making lows. You get a double low right here. So this is, it's not going anymore. And so again, I want to go back to the variables. You don't have to make every penny out of trade. You're making, you're making trades that have variables. Substantial news, unexpected. I'm reacting quickly. I'm fighting for price. I'm exiting when the momentum slows. Connected to my news feeds. That's the trade that I'm making. You could call it, anyway, it's a fast moving trade. There's certainly a swing trade you can make. You can swing it from here and look for a, a, a bigger down move and then cover it here when this, when this next news announcement comes out. You can certainly do that. But again, I'm focusing on the type of trade that's easiest for you guys to be making when you're developing. And then what happens at 3.32? So we hit it, we cover it, we cover it, we're hanging out, we're doing something else, and then we get another tweet. We get a positive tweet. We get a positive tweet that's, that's unexpected, that's significant. Again, we're making trades with variables, and we're getting the mirror image. News substantial, news that's unexpected and not baked into the price, I want to react quickly. Connected to all the news feeds, I exit when the momentum slows. So we have the mirror image of that in this potential setup. All right, so 3.32 GM comes out with its announcement. Bam. Okay, we buy it and we sell it into the into the up move. Yeah, this is a breaking news trade. There's going to be remember this is a large cap stock, and so this is a move of <clears throat> eighty cents here. That's a big move in GM. You know, the ATR is a dollar twenty. So if the ATR was higher, you would you would have gotten a, a a larger dollar move. And then you know we we get another mirror image tweet right here, and the stock goes up a good fifty cents which relative to our ATR is still a big move. Still a big move. Very strong trade to have in your playbook. The, 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 the most successful, active traders who have the best return on investment employ the strategy. And so we, we, see this, we see this trade happen in lots of different sectors all the time. And I wanted to just give you exposure to it for you guys to be thinking about it and working on it. So what you learned today is one of the most effective trades by active traders on the street. This is a trade you can exploit daily. It's a straight strategy that, to capitalize on these opportunities. So we don't want to just say I trade breaking news setups. We want to have our strategy mapped out with the variables that we're looking for and our strategy for trading it. We want to have that mapped out already. We want to do that for all of our trades. There are multiple ways to capture this opportunity. So look, admittedly, I chose a way to handle this trade that's best for new and developing traders. You can certainly take the principle of these trades and turn it into a swing trade. Now, you'd have different variables for it, and you'd have a different trade strategy for how you attacked it, and your win weight would be a little bit lower. But when you won, you'd make more money. And that's a, that's a perfectly acceptable way to trade this opportunity for your playbook. How traders can use a tweet to profit, 
And I, look, I, I know I'm getting a lot of emails in my inbox about traders who are frustrated with the market kind of going up and down based on news that's kind of coming out that they can't control. And, you know, look, you could be frustrated by that or you could see it as an opportunity. You could adjust how you're trading, shorten your time frame, and be more nimble and be able to attack and take advantage of more opportunities. The market's not there to trade the way that you want it to trade. One of the more dangerous things that you can say as a trader is, well, the market isn't reacting the way that I need it to react. My strategy isn't working well in this type of market. Our job is to pull money out of markets in present market conditions. How we want the market to trade is not the way the market does trade. And I think uh, saying and expecting the market to react the way that you want it to is, is, is uh, not going to produce the, the, it's not going to produce the best mindset that you can have to be a consistent, large, sustaining trader. And I've seen a lot of guys who can make a lot of money in certain type of markets who can in others and have to go on and do other things. I want you guys to be large, seven-figure, sustaining, profitable traders with lots of different plays in your playbook to help you attack varying markets.